Hi everyone, my name is Gabrielle. I work here at Gus Lane in Laval as an advisor and video instructor. And I'm here today with Pierre Villeneuve, a Sony Canada representative with the brand new Sony A7S III that I think everyone's been waiting for for so long. So um, Pierre, could you please uh, give us a little overview of the technical aspects of this new camera? Yes, the one thing that didn't change is the resolution of the sensor. It's still 12 megapixel, mm -hmm. but it's a new sensor that is backlit. So it enhances the uh, low light capability of the camera and also the scanning rate. So there's way less rolling shutter than previous model. I, I, in fact, it's three times less rolling shutter than the previous, which is, which is a lot. Um, uh, we also introduced new uh, codecs. The codecs are now XAVCS HS and XAVS, XAVCS uh, and All Intra. So All Intra is for a higher bitrate higher quality, easier editing, but the files will be bigger. Uh, HS will be more efficient, but it still goes to 280 megabits per second, so higher bitrate than the previous uh, limit that was uh, 100 megabits per second. And speaking of that new sensor, uh, the low light the capacity of this camera compared to the a7S II or like a7 III is a lot higher. There's a lot less grain. Right? There's less grain, yeah, than, less the, grain yes, than the previous model, but the high ISO limit is still 400,000. Still the same. Uh, but more, better performance when you compare the same ISO than the previous model. Um, the, um, the image stabilization has been improved also because there's a new active mode that will slightly crop. You still keep the uh, 4K resolution, mm -hmm. but you have more compensation for uh, hand holding the camera while you're shooting video. Uh, we also revised the menus. Now the menus are completely redone, different interface, and you can also change the menus with your fingers. Oh, so yeah, so now you can change it right on the pad. And also I noticed that the layout of the menu is a lot more visual than before. I think it's a bit more efficient. And also you said that they, uh, they change depending on the mode the camera is on. Uh, yes, exactly. So if you're in video mode and you, you go to file setting, you'll see the, the bit rates and you'll see the, the codex. But if you're in photo mode, you'll see the JPEG and RAW selections. Exactly. So you uh, need one click menu, you see exactly what you want right uh, at your fingertips. You don't have to look for and change all these uh, pages and stuff yeah. in the big menu that Sony is known to have, but with a lot of functions, so we're not complaining about that at all. Uh, also, with that big sensor, I guess a lot of maybe, I know some people are uh, questioning the overheating. Exactly. Well, like that. the thing you're looking for is what's the the frame rate that you can shoot in yeah, 4K exactly. and not only you have 24p and 30p, you have 60p and 120p. Yeah. And big files. big files and we have revised the, um, the thermal management of the camera inside from the ground up so you can record in 60p for more than an hour without absolutely no issue whatsoever. Uh, you can also record in 120p for very long. I don't have the official limit but I mean many people have tested it and they could not make the camera overheat. Because basically the way it works is a bit like um, you told me there's some little uh, things on the sensor that basically redistribute the heat elsewhere in the body so it can be like... Yes, it's very, it's very tricky to remove the heat from the sensor because it's, it's stabilized by the imaging sensor yeah. device, the, uh, the stabilization device. So it's not bolt on on a radiator, so you have to take the heat off. So there's like four springy things that are very heat conductive that takes the heat off the... Uh, the sensor and bring it to the chassis of the camera to uh, cool it down. So no problem with overeating whatsoever? Apparently not. Nice. Cool. And the, um, the viewfinder has been uh, redesigned also with a new uh, OLED panel that is 9.4 million dots and the glasses behind it has been revised so it, it's a bigger immersion. It's 0 0.90 magnification which is a word best. Yes, great. Also the screen which we can now flip and yeah. turn which I think a lot of people were waiting for with this new model. So we're really uh, glad to see this, so to have this screen that can pop out on the left, which is really great. Um, also, physically, the ergonomy changed a bit. I see that it's more like following uh, the look of the uh, R4 and the A92. Yes, the ergonomics have changed. The grip is deeper. Uh, the dials, you have lock buttons on top. Uh, the buttons are bigger and you fully feel the, the press, the detent when you yeah, press exactly. them. And we also changed the um, the way the modes are organized on the dial because most enthusiast users will switch between manual photo mode to video mode and they used to be 
uh, on, on opposite e sides of the yes. wheel. So now yeah. they're right next to exactly. each other, so, so it's easier to switch. Small details, but um, uh, yeah, exactly. And like small details, like having locks on the uh, exposure compensation and modes, it seems um, little, but when you're shooting with a cage on your rig and run and gun shooting documentary, it's the type of thing that if you uh, accidentally change the exposure compensation, can ruin your whole footage. And when you're on a big rig, you don't have the time to always check if it's yeah. at, uh, currently at what you want it to be. So not to like have the peace of mind to have a lock on that wheel, like it will help a lot of people. Yes. And the, uh, if we look at the ports on the side, of course you have the headphone jack, you have the, uh, um, sorry, the microphone and the headphone jacks here. You have the USB micro and USB-C, but the USB-C is not new, but this one is different because it's power delivery compatible. So if you have a, a battery pack with that feature or uh, AC adapter with power delivery feature, the camera will absorb more power. So it will almost never uh, take energy from the battery itself. So your battery will remain full. So you can pretty much power your camera for hours and hours without any issue with a big battery pack or USB cable. And if you go to the card side, uh, you have two slots, so yeah. a, both SD and both Compact Flash Express Type A. Which, which is new card. New card, much faster. And the new ones that we have released with the camera are 700 megabytes per second read, so more than twice the speed. Um, and when you're ready to um, display or record externally, yeah. there's a full-size HDMI full -size port. Full-size HDMI, which is a big improvement yes, indeed. Yes. And it's HDMI port that allows you to send raw data, 16-bit, to an external recorder. Yeah, that's enormous yeah. for uh, te technical uh, specifications. But also, speaking of these SD cards, I think there's a bit of change uh, c concerning like the way that you can open the door and change your SD cards as you're recording. Yes. Yes, you can open the door and when one card is full, the camera will switch to the next card and you can remove the, the, the card that is filled. You change it for an empty one and record pretty right, much so non-stop. basically, considering that we, uh, we can plug an external battery uh, with the new uh, USB support and basically power the camera for a really long time, there's no overheating happening with the new uh, heat control system. And those SD card that we can open the door and change any time can basically record for as long as you want. There's no really, really pretty limit, much. Pretty yeah, much, yeah, yeah. Which I think is really impressive and really huge. It's built to work. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> built to work. It's really built for the field, which is amazing. Yeah. Also, um, I think I forgot maybe to mention the new, new 422 also. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so right. So color depth is huge. So for people that color grade a lot at home. And 10 bits, not exactly. only 422, but 10 bits. Okay, so 422, 10 bits. So if you're doing a lot of color grading, shooting log, um, building your own lots at home, you have a lot more depth to work with, which I think is really impressive. So yeah, indeed, after this whole list of amazing things that this body does, and I think we waited a long time to have it. A lot of people waited a long time to upgrade, I think, their AS7S2, or to get these, uh, th this one as a first camera, and then take your other camera as a second camera. The real question is, when can we get it, and at what? Price. Uh, the price is four thousand seven hundred and ninety nine dollars, and if you reserve now and or very soon, you might get it on the first batch on the twenty fourth of September. Twenty fourth of September. That's pretty um, soon, actually. It's pretty soon. We're already in August, uh, but I know there's a lot, a lot of pre-orders have been made already. So if you do want to get your hands on it uh, for the end of September or maybe early October, I would highly suggest placing your pre-order really, really soon because a lot of people are waiting for it. So you can, uh, of course, pre-order on our website at gusnephoto.ca or in any of our four stores in Brossard, Trois-Rivières, Laval and Quebec, either on the phone with our sales uh, people or uh, in, uh, on the floor in the store. Um, so yeah, if you want to get your hands on the first batch, I would recommend doing that really right now. And if you have any other questions that we did not answer in this video, please do not hesitate to put them down in the comments and uh, we'll answer them for you. Uh, or also to you, our salespeople are always there to answer any further questions concerning the A7S III. So thank you, Pierre, for being here with us with the brand new A7 III. I think it's the first one in Canada we can see here physically. So yes. thank you so much for being here today with thank us. Thank you, Gabriel.